Welcome to another edition of Porch Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the extra special pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. I don't know. I hear that opening all the time, but it just kind of struck me when you said another edition of Horse Center. Breeders' Cup win and you're in, Matt. That's what we're talking about this week. Breeders' Cup win and you're in. Races of plenty of Churchill Downs on Saturday, led by the Stephen Foster, Matt. And if we're talking Stephen Foster, I think we have to begin the conversation with none other than Necker Island. No, I, I tease you, Matt, and none other than Maxfield. Let's talk about Maxfield, the winner of last month's Ali Shiva. Maxfield, yes, uh, gonna be a big, big favorite in the race and deservedly so. so. I think he towers over this field in just about any kind of uh, handicapping factor that you'd like to pull out. And, you know, hey, hey, let's face it, Brian, six wins and seven starts. Only loss was uh, going 10 furlongs in the big cap. So uh, it's hard to knock Maxfield. Matt, you stole everything I was going to say. So I have nothing to say now. I'm going to remain silent. No, Maxfield, Matt, you, you're, you're right. Uh, uh, from a class level, he stands above this field. He's never run a bad race. As you said, six or seven lifetime. He's three for three at Churchill Downs. He's very good at nine furlongs. He's versatile enough to uh, run, run any kind of race. If it's a slow early pace, he can be close. If it's a fast early pace, he comes from behind. It looks like there's going to be pace in here. Nine furlongs at his home track. There are some times, Matt, where I really, really try to take a shot and beat the heavy favorite this Stephen Foster, the grade two, $600,000 Breeders' Cup winning you're in for the Breeders' Cup Classic November 6th at Del Mar will not be one of those instances. I think Maxfield wins this race. It's just a matter of who runs second, Matt, maybe visiting off that second place finish, a solid second behind him in the Alasheba is the most likely candidate to be the second choice. Yeah, yes. Different different things stated there about who's going to be second choice and who's going to finish second. But either way, Visited is an interesting horse in that he's got six wins in his career. And interesting, interestingly, all six of them were on Tapita surfaces. Three at Turfway Park, three at Golden Gate Fields out on the West Coast. But he's got a couple of good races on dirt tracks also uh, against uh, against good field. Um, he was third in that Ali Sheba that you mentioned against Maxfield. And then as a three-year-old, he was third in the affirmed at Santa Anita. Both, uh, both were good efforts. And uh, uh, the, the recent Ali Sheba where uh, Visitant was out there on the front end, um, you know, except for losing to Maxfield, was good also. So interesting horse. Yeah, you, you would think he's the best on synthetic surfaces, but he's proven. Uh, there are some bad dirt races in there, but he, he ran a good third behind Mucho Gusto a few years ago, as you said, and he was a very good second last time. Now, he was on the lead in the Ali Shiva early. I think it might be a little bit tougher for him to be on the lead or at least a clear lead in here with the likes of Warriors Charge and a few others. Warriors Charge is coming out of a slop race where I think we can draw a line through it. He never got out there. Usually he's on the lead and he's got some back class. Sprawl is another horse I think we could see get that a little bit here, Matt. And last time he just missed third, but just missed in the blame. Yeah, and, and like you said, he's another one that has done his best running, had his best results when he was part of the lead, pressing the pace. And, and as you mentioned earlier, there's four or five horses in here that you need to say that about. Their best results have come when they're out there early. I don't know if that means that we're gonna have a fast, fast pace in the race, but there's gonna be a lot of horses out there who wanna be towards the front. Yeah, and we need to see if Warriors Charge can be as good as he once was. And Sprawl is one of those horses, it seems like, unfortunately, where he looks impressive against Lesser, but hasn't been able to break through against graded stakes horses. Silver Dust, on the other hand, Matt, is a five-time graded stakes winner. He's on the verge of becoming a millionaire. Maybe he's the most likely horse to finish second. 
yeah, we got like three horses in this field, Brian, who win the race are going to become millionaire silver dust um had a nice uh win uh last time in the ben ally at keeneland after he came back and they tried him on the turf which was a little interesting didn't seem to be something that the seven-year-old wanted any part of you know they get to be that age and they're like what the heck are you doing putting me on the turf i'm not running on this but bounce back really well in the uh uh, uh in the in the Ben Ally, um, yeah, another one who wants to be part of it. Again, uh, that age question get put some questions in my mind, especially against a pretty good field like this. Yeah, well, you know, the Ben Ali was a nice win. Uh, the turf was probably just a tightener for him to get going. I think he is the second most classy horse in the race and therefore is a must use in the exotics. The horse I'm really looking forward to betting underneath, though, we haven't even mentioned yet. His name is South Bend, Matt. He was a good three-year-old. He ran some good races, bouncing back between turf and, turf and dirt. I remember how fast he finished this very weekend last year in the Ohio Derby. I like his two races back because his first one was a nice win at Keeneland. The second one, he had all kinds of trouble in the blame. Yeah, Brian, we, re we remember back at the beginning of this guy's career when he won his first races, uh, he was uh, he was a hot horse. And then after that, uh, he didn't get any wins as a three year old. Bill Mott was trying all kinds of things. He was on the turf. He was on the dirt uh, and a little bit a little bit disappointing. But now he's back, as you said, uh, two good races starting out with a uh, nice allowance win and then had a lot of trouble in that blame. So the result doesn't look good, but it was not a particularly good trip. Uh, um, I'm interested in him too. Uh, um, I don't know how much confidence I have in that, but I don't particularly like uh, a lot of the other horses in this field. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, there's a drop off after Maxfield, that's for sure. But I do like South Bend quite a bit. I, I think he is actually relatively consistent. He was just put in a lot of tough spots last year. That rally is, uh, I think, a good thing, nine furlongs in here, especially with a horse who I think is going to be a clear winner in Maxfield. So I think South Bend is the horse that's really going to be running down the lane. Good chance to get second. I'm hoping for double digits on him, Matt. Anybody else you want to mention in this uh, uh, nine horse field in the Stephen Foster. Uh, not really. I think, you know, uh, we didn't have to, we didn't have to put their names out there, but we talked about the fact that, uh, that a few of them are going to be part of the pace, but you know, uh, for them, this is a step up in class. And, and like you said, Maxfield, is just too classy. Silver dust got so much, uh, back class, uh, Necker Island is another interesting horse. Um, who showed a lot of promise as a three-year-old and, and uh, came back and had a nice win to start the season. At least for Necker Island, the pace scenario is in his favor. Yeah, and that's part of the reason I like South Bend a little bit too. We're gonna to talk to, about all our picks a little bit later in the show, but that's the Stephen Foster again, $600,000. I've seen Eclipse Award winners win this race. Uh, this uh, this last couple yep. decades for sure, Matt, and it goes off at race 11, a big card at Churchill Downs. Much earlier in the card, race five is another Breeders' Cup winning your rate in race. That's for the Breeders' Cup distaff. We've got a much shorter field in the Florida League, but again, we look to have a heavy favorite and one of the division leaders in La Trusca. Yes, she's back. I don't know. I was a little surprised that she was coming back uh this quickly uh, um i mean you know it's not like he's coming back in a week or two weeks or anything but i didn't necessarily expect her to be coming back this quickly and i guess that's an indication that she came out of that last impressive victory uh, uh really well and and is ready to run and this trainer clearly uh has a horse that's in fine form and and uh is going to let her run it's a small field it's an interesting field again it's a field that seems to have a, a number of horses who do their best work um, as part of the early pace. Yeah, that's true, Matt. Latruska certainly wants to be on or near the lead, as do uh, Envutante, uh, perhaps even Spices Nice, uh, and Antoinette, a, a horse who's done most of her running on turf but can certainly handle the dirt, all want to be closer near the lead. Latruska, though, she's been the best older mare in the country so far, and she deserves, just like 
Maxfield to be a heavy favorite in here. It says six. Uh, Spice is Nice is also entered on the Ohio Derby undercard, so it could be down to five. I think the horse Latruska will have to beat is Unglutante. Uh, that's your opinion, Brian. Uh, um, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree that uh, Unglutante is uh, the horse that is going to upset uh, Latruska in there, but uh, certainly her, her last race was extremely per, uh, visually impressive in the Shawnee, a listed stake after uh, finishing second in the La Troyenne and, and to on Vutante's uh, uh, credit, uh, she's a horse that loves Churchill Downs with three of her five wins coming under the Twin Spires. Yeah, she's, uh, she's excellent at Churchill Downs. The only horse that's ever beat her Churchill Downs is She Dares the Devil. If you look at her form, her best race of her life came at Churchill Downs last fall. And Kenny McPeak seems to really be able to get this, uh, get these Phillies to just keep going and going. Anvutante is still improving. She's got good tactical speed. She loves Churchill Downs. I think she's a big threat to the favorite in here. Spice is nice if she runs. She's one of these Phillies who's shown a lot of promise in her career. Uh, maybe she's finally turned the corner with a couple wins this year. Yeah, and, and terrific breeding for uh, Todd Pletcher that we've noted in the past. Uh, got a nice win uh, in the DuPont last time. Yeah, yeah, she's, uh, she's moving forward, but she couldn't quite beat the good ones last year when she tried the likes of Swiss Skydiver, for instance. Another interesting horse, Matt, is Point of Honor. Point of Honor is certainly not one of the horses that'll be on or near the lead in here. Uh, but she's a classy filly who was last seen in the Breeders' Cup Distop. Yeah, and makes a change to the barn of Shug McGahey, who, uh, you know, handles quality horses, well-bred horses like this uh, really well. Right, and a point of honor, she's, she's got enough class in her form. If, if the pace is fast, or in other words, if horses want to go and take the race to Latruska early, point of honor is the likely horse to most benefit from a contested early pace. Then you got Vault Mountain. Vault, uh, you know, she wasn't certainly, I said that about another filly, but she certainly wasn't at this level last year, but she looks to be getting good for trainer Brad Cox. Yeah, first in the Ruffian, grade two last time out. Um, also an allowance win at Oaklawn Park. And uh, to her credit, She's going to be getting a, the right kind of pace scenario in this race with a lot of horses that want to go out there and run. This is a closer from the barn of, barn of Brad Cox, and both of those make her dangerous. Dangerous. Not all grade twos are created equally, though, and I thought she caught a much weaker grade two last time in the Ruffy, and then she'll find here on Saturday in the Fleur de Lis. We already mentioned Antoinette. A nice turf force who's run good dirt races before. She's got some speed. I just don't know where she fits in with mares like Latruska and Anvutante in here. I was waiting for Matt to say something. I don't think he's going to say anything. Are you there, Matt? Yes, I am. We're done with that race. <laughs> That's our look at the Florida Lee. Again, a big part of the uh, great, great card at Churchill Downs this Saturday. Hey folks, I wanna remind you, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel here at HRN. Hit that notification so you never miss another episode of Horse Center. Matt, uh, I gotta ask you, with these Breeders' Cup win in your in races and, and horses like Maxfield and Latruska, do you think we're looking at horses that will be Eclipse Award winners at the end of the year? Um, I, they certainly are in the pictures in their uh, in their division at this point. Uh, Latruska is certainly at the top of the older female uh, division, and in the current NTRA top thoroughbred poll, is ranked number three of all horses, male or female. Maxfield, uh, on the other hand, has to do more. Not necessarily in my eyes, but uh, in that same poll, Maxfield is number seven and is fourth in terms of older males in that poll. He's ranked behind uh, the likes of uh, Mystic Guide, uh, Silver State, and Charlton. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, 
but that's the way the voters see it right now. So Max Field is going to need to win the Foster and win a, a, a number of other big races. Yeah, well, Matt, let me just say those voters are a fickle bunch, and we happen to be a part of that uh, that fickle group of voters for the NTRA poll. I, in fact, think Latruska is certainly the leader of the division, as you said, but I think she's still got a lot of work to do and some yeah. really good mayors to beat. But Maxfield, he, he, he's, as you said, he was fourth on the poll as far as older dirt males go right now, but I think he's the horse that's really going to have a big second half of the year. I, I look for him to win here. And he's my horse to beat in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It's as simple as that right now. So I do think we'll see at least one champion running at Churchill Downs on Saturday night. There's other big races. There's some other goose in New York, but we're going to go to Ohio. We're going to go to Thistle Down. We rarely talk about races from Thistle Down. So let's celebrate the half million dollar Ohio Derby, nine furlongs for the three year old males, several of whom. Uh, uh, were on the Kentucky Derby Trail, if not uh, participated in Triple Crown races, Matt. Let's talk with Promise Keeper. Looks to be a lukewarm favorite for trainer Todd Fletcher because this is a deep race with, I think, a number of potential winners. Deep race field of 11, Brian, with, uh, with several names that are, we're used to hearing, uh, were pretty active on the Kentucky Derby Trail, and then other horses like Promise Keeper that you mentioned, Brian, whose career as a three-year-old is starting up later than that. And uh, Promise Keeper was a very nice winner of the Peter Pan, which was supposed to serve as a prep for the Belmont Stakes, but things just didn't work out quite right for Promise Keeper to go in the Belmont. But before that, a very nice win um, in an allowance race at Keeneland. So you're, you're one of the decisions that handicappers will have to make in this grade three Ohio Derby is uh, do you like those familiar names uh, that we'll talk about or do you like the up and comer like Promise Keeper? Yeah, Promise Keeper could be an up and comer, Matt. Uh, I worry that in the Tampa Bay Derby in another deep field, he really backed out of it pretty badly. But his two wins, as you say, allowance of Keeneland and then the one turn nine furlong Peter Pan at Belmont Park were good wins. So he's probably deserving of the favorite. The thing I do like about him is he's breaking from the rail. He's got good tactical speed. He's moving forward, as you said, and he's got Louis Sias coming into uh, Ohio to ride him. So a lot of positives there for Promise Keeper. But I think he still has stuff to prove as the favorite here in the Ohio Derby. Several more will get that Matt. One of them is King Fury. And we haven't seen King Fury since he won that sloppy edition of the Lexington at Keeneland. In fact, it's his only race as a three-year-old. But the son of Curlin for trainer Kenny McPeak looked very good doing it a few months ago. He sure did look good doing that. And after that Lexington, he was the buzz horse uh, uh, on the Derby trail uh, horse that uh, – trainer uh, Kenny McPeak was very high on is still very high on but like you said that was a nice performance coming back in his debut in 2021 to win that race but then stuff happened and it's still his only race and now he's got to go into this field of 11 that you know is a pretty good field um, not going to be easy to uh travel out to Ohio and beat this field having not raced since April. Right. And, and you know what? I, I think it's a difficult field for everybody because there's 11 horses and there's seven, eight really reasonable potential winners in here. So I think it's a tough race to handicap and that's what kind of makes it fun to handicap. And if you hit the exact in here, you're going to, you're going to be a happy man or woman. King Fury, uh, if it does rain, which they're talking about rain uh, in Ohio on Saturday, maybe moves up. The son of Curlin certainly looked like he liked the slop at Keeneland. Another horse we need to talk about, Matt, and got a lot of buzz, but hasn't been seen lately is Mosque Parade. Mosque Parade uh, had only been put up in a maiden race, had never finished first in a race, but then in Churchill Downs in a first level allowance race on Kentucky Derby Day, Matt, he looked like something special. The son of Upstart trained by Al Stahl Jr., one off for fun in fast time. Yeah, he lit one up at uh, Churchill Downs in that l allowance race, winning by uh, 11 lengths or so. And, and 
He's out in the outside post, but he's another horse who uh, does his best running, uh, pressing the pace. Uh, he's an interesting one. Maybe we're going to get a decent price on him because he doesn't have the stakes kind of victories that some of these others have. And another one that you really have to consider to be an up and comer. Yeah, an up and comer for sure. But on the other hand, I might disagree with you just a little bit in that I, I think off that 11th plus length win in 148 and change, he will get bet a little bit more. And with only one career win, I, I, I might want to lay off him if he's only four or five to one in a field like this. Keep me in mind as a horse I think won't get bet quite as much, even though he's been the horse who's been running in all these great stakes. He hasn't finished first, second, or third in any race this year. But on the other hand, you know, he rallied for seventh in the Kentucky Derby. He rallied for fourth in the Preakness. This is at least an easier spot than that. Yeah, he could definitely get some class relief in here because none of those big, you know, big names in the Triple Crown are in this race. Um, and I guess the fourth place in the Preakness was his best race of the year considering that keep me in mind is a very deep closer and that track at Pimlico on Preakness day probably was favoring the horses out front a bit. I wouldn't call it a bias track, but certainly was not a track to be making a deep closing move, but keep me in mind did get up for fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Another horse you have to consider. And he's one horse, as you said, that will probably be running doing his best running late in the race. Another horse who could be running a little bit late is Proxy. And Proxy, I tell you what, if you draw a line through the sloppy edition of the uh, Lexington, he looks pretty good because the horses that ran in fairgrounds on the Derby Trail this year have, have consistently come back and run big races. And Proxy was competitive with them early in the year, Matt. Maybe he didn't like the slop. He's been away just like King Fury since the Lexington. I think he's another horse you really have to consider. Yeah, Joe Bravo is going to go out to Ohio to uh, ride the horse. And as you mentioned on that fairgrounds, Der Kentucky Derby trail, uh, Proxy did really well, had a second, had another second and was fourth in that uh, Louisiana Derby, which I think as things turned out, as you and I have talked about before, it turned out to be one of the most significant prep races uh, on the Derby trail this year. Um, Right. But is this the race where Proxy is going to bounce back from a long layoff to get a victory? Yeah, he certainly could. He certainly could because we just draw a line through that Lexington and he looks pretty good. Another horse I think looks pretty good in here, Matt, is from the Brendan Walsh barn. And he's got just a little bit of form I even like better than Moss Parade. He doesn't have that crazy win that Moss Parade has. But if you look at ethical judgment, switching from a turf debut and then kind of got races that were taken off the turf. But there's some decent horses in there. And Ethical Judgment, a son of Honor Code, just seems to be getting better and better. Comes off a nice allowance win last time. Yeah, certainly uh, uh, you can't knock him for those efforts in there, uh, making, a, making the step up to try and win a graded stakes race here. Yeah, we, we just mentioned about six, Matt, and we could probably mention some more, but that's where we're going to stop with this Ohio Derby coverage. I think it's a wide, wide open race, but now it's time to make our picks. Let's go back and pick all three races, Matt, with our top pick and our top long shot for the Foster, the Florida Lee, and the Ohio Derby. You start with the Stephen Foster for me. Will do. Uh, I, I think we're going to agree in here, Brian. Uh, it is hard to go against Maxfield in here, you know, and, and, and if that's the way the cards play out and the heavy favorite is in a spot where everything seems to be going his, his way, especially the pace scenario in here, I'm not going to play against Maxfield. My long shot in here is South Bend. I'm hoping that he lives up to his potential that we saw uh, uh, when he won his first three races and, and Bill Mott's going him, got him going the right way and he's going to leave him on the dirt, but we'll see. Yeah, well, South Bend uh, is a horse, again, I thought ran some very good races last summer when he went back to dirt races like the Ohio Derby and even the Travers. Uh, so South Bend is my, my second pick here. Far and away, folks, if you've been watching the show, you know I like Maxfield. I believe in Maxfield all the way. 
I don't think he gets beat here in this Stephen Foster. He's my top pick. South Bend is my long shot, but he's also the horse I like second best, just ahead of horses who I think are dangerous, like Silver Dust and Visitant. Matt, the Florida Lee, much smaller field, same card, Churchill Downs. Who's your top pick? Who's your long shot? Well, Brian, this was uh, uh, this was a little tricky for me to identify those two. I, I feel like uh, uh, Latruska is the best horse, um, but she's again going to face pressure on the front end, which which wasn't a big deal last time. She handled some talented uh, pace horses and 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 kicked their butts last time. But as you've heard me say on the show before. You know, how, how many times are they, they going to keep going to the well winning? But for me, my top pick, I was really seriously considering. I ended up making my long shot pick. So I kind of default back to making Latruska my top choice and my long shot pick in here, who I like a lot because of the pace scenario is Volt. Okay, so Matt's on Latruska and Vault. I'm going to give you two other horses because I think Latruska is beatable. Um, it's tough for me, just my nature, to pick two horses who are going to be under even money. I picked Maxfield in the Foster. I don't think he gets beat there, but I think there is potential for Latruska to be upset in here coming off three weeks. She's had some tough races this year. I really believe that Anglutante is one of the best older mayor, mayor, uh, mayors in the country. I think she's extremely underrated. I know she likes Churchill Downs, and she's moving forward really nicely, getting better with each start this year. She ran, she dares a devil uh, uh, pretty well uh, two starts ago. I think she's gotten even better since then. I think she can upset Latruska. So she's going to be my top pick, likely second choice in here, I know, but she'll be my top pick to pull the upset in the Florida Lee. And I'm not sure Spice is Nice is going to run in here. I'm not as big on vault uh, in here as Matt. So my top long shot, I'm going to go with Point of Honor to rally up probably for third, though, in the Florida League. How about the Ohio Derby, Matt? Uh, this could be a very good betting race. Yeah, it could be. And like you said, with, with the favorite in this race, whoever it turns out to be likely to be, you know, three to one or so and a, with a field of 11, uh, uh, the exact uh, and the trifecta are probably going to pay well, but I guess I am going to lead to horses that are more the new names, as opposed to some of those names that we saw earlier in the year. Uh, uh, King Fury, you know, coming off of that layoff and Proxy coming off that layoff just concerned me a little bit. I'm going to go with uh, Promise Keeper as an up and comer as my top choice. And my long shot pick is going to be Mask Parade. Okay. Uh, you promise Keeper, I, I do think he's going to be the favorite, if, if nothing more, for the connection of Todd Pletcher and Luis Saez coming into Thistle Down. But uh, like Matt said, with so many horses to bet, I, I don't think anybody, including Promise Keeper, is going to be low. So if I had to pick a most likely horse to run first or second in here, with his tactical speed, with Louis Saez coming in, it is Prime's keeper. So I had to go with him as my top choice. But the horse I'm really excited to bet a little bit is Ethical Judgment, because I think he's going to be lost on the tote board, Matt. I think the five other horses we talked about will all be below Ethical Judgment. So that means he can slip up into double digits. And I think he's getting good. Mask Parade, I, I certainly have um, a, a, a worry about how good he could be if he can run back to that last race. But uh, the odds, I think, are going to be twice as high on ethical judgment. And I like them pretty similarly, but I think ethical judgment might uh, might have even more good recent form overall than Mosque Parade. Of the others, I think King Fury is a threat, especially if it rains. But I'm going Promise Keeper with you. I'm going with ethical judgment for a little bit more odds in that Ohio Derby. Matt, there's one more race I want to talk about, even though it's three weeks away, because I think the race at my old stomping grounds, your current stomping grounds, that's Monmouth Park on the Jersey Shore. The Haskell could be coming up really big. It's still three weeks away, Matt, but uh, we're looking at a potential bang up field for the million dollar Haskell this year. That is for sure. A lot of big names on the possible list, some up and comers uh, also, some horses that are possibly going to have another start 
uh, soon before the race. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, a lot of interesting horses coming into the field, including Mandaloon, who won the Pegasus as a prep race. Is Bob Baffert going to bring Medina Spirit uh, to uh, New Jersey to the Haskell a race that he's won? I don't know. What is it, Brian? 28 times uh, he's won the Haskell, I don't know. Medina Spirit has one workout on June 14th uh, since the Triple Ground. Ron Bauer is a possibility. Um, interesting field. Yeah, it, it, it really is, Matt. And I think Mandaloon's the one horse that we can count on out of the Brad Cox barn. He might still be the Kentucky Derby winner pending the court decision. And he had a nice prep winning locally, as you mentioned, in the Pegasus. I think he is a uh, pretty much a sure thing if, uh, if, he's, uh, if he's healthy for the Haskell. But then you look at these possibles or probables, and it gets exciting. I don't see any reason why Medina Spirit wouldn't come to the Haskell. He had a nice work in company, as you said, on the 14th with a top older horse uh, out at Santa Anita. So I think he's getting ready for Bob Baffert's traditional assault. You're right, he's won this race more times than we'd even care to uh, mention, Matt. So Medina Spirit, we're likely gonna get that rematch in the Haskell. Then you throw in Ron Bauer, they're talking about possibly turf for the Belmont Derby, but uh, the Preakness winner, I think is about 50-50 right now to go to the Haskell. As is Hot Rod Charlie, Matt, who's probably my deep down my favorite if I'm just looking in into my heart, Hot Rod Charlie's probably the three-year-old I like the most, even though I know Essential Quality has beaten him in a couple of big races. He's looking at maybe the Pacific Classic, maybe the Haskell. So he's, uh, he's potential uh, for the Haskell as well. Midnight Bourbon, we didn't mention him yet. So we got all these horses that ran first or second or third in, in the Triple Crown. Midnight Bourbon, I expect to be in the Haskell. Matt, Steve Asmussen should send the, uh, the horse that ran second in the Preakness out to Jersey for this race. This would seem like a good spot for a horse with tactical speed, like Midnight Bourbon, a nice consistent horse. Weyburn, I could see going up to Saratoga, even though he prepped in the Pegasus and was close to Mandaloon in the Pegasus. So he's probably 50-50 as well, Haskell or, uh, or, or the Jim Dandy, perhaps. And then you got Following C. I, I've heard rumblings that he might go mad. And I know you're high a little bit on Following C after the change of Barnes of him. Yeah, and, and uh, there's also was some talk that he might make his first state uh, uh, appearance in the Dwyer on 4th of July weekend um, at Belmont. So we'll have to see where they go, where Pletcher goes with that former Bob Baffert runner. Yeah, well, here's the interesting thing. So I said Mandaloon is probably a sure thing for the Haskell, but then we talked about six really exciting candidates. Even if half of those probable possibles go, I think the Haskell is looking like one of the races of the crop here, Matt. This three-year-old division still has a lot of answers to go. And if we get the winner and the second place finisher and the third place finisher from the Kentucky Derby, maybe the Preakness winner and second place finisher, uh, plus some very interesting horses like Wayburn and Following C. The Haskell could be, in fact, the race of the year. I know you're looking forward to it three weeks from now at Monmouth Park. I absolutely am. Are you coming up to go to the race, Brian? I certainly cannot this year, Matt. I won't be in, in the Jersey Shore. I've seen some great Haskells over the year, but I, I'm not going to be able to make that trip for family obligations. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you. We covered a lot here. The Foster, the Florida Lee, the Ohio Derby and the Haskell. What's your party shot from all this? We did lots of good racing. We had a little lull in there. Uh, thanks for watching one of our special shows that we like to do during those kind of uh, off weekends, but uh, we got big races uh, uh, coming up all, all around the country as we head into the summer. And of course, I wanna thank our producer for putting together the show. Our producers actually named Tony Bada Bing, Matt. Thanks to Tony. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks for all you watching. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there, Derby Wars, Matt. Uh, yeah, the summer's starting to heat up in more ways than one. Great weekend of racing here. We're going to be back right, right here next week on Horse Center talking about more as we get closer to races like the Haskell, the Travers, the Pacific Classic, Saratoga, Del Mar coming soon. Don't miss any of it right here on Horse Center.